Welcome in to Game Night Live Rewind's coverage of the boys' second round in the 6A state tournament. Dane Stewart, Tim Haslam, we got a doozy today. The 6 seed and 11 seeds going to battle. Fremont hosting Harriman. Tim, this uh, this game, look, Fremont got off to such a hot start, scoring goals left and right. Last couple of weeks hasn't quite looked the same. I don't want to say upset alert, but they got to bring their A game today here because it gets real. Yeah, you know, it's the playoffs. We've seen a couple upsets already today. If you don't bring your A game and that other team does, then, it, you know, you, you could disappoint the home fans. Fremont winning the opening faceoff. This is a team with, we talked about the goal scoring, 264 goals on the year for Fremont. Uh, I mean, you look at some of the top goal scorers. Davis Searle has 58. Carson Isaacson with 56. Boston Reese, 46. Caden Berry with 46. There's a lot of goal scoring as that one just missed wide. And that is a big rip coming there from Carson Isaacson, the sophomore. And and it, that's exactly right, Dane. They're both sophomores, yep. the leading scorers. You know, they led this team last year as freshmen. I'm actually really excited to see what they do, you know, obviously in this game because this is where we're at, but also just moving forward for the next two years. Nice save put on there by I think that's Asher Deputy. And, yep. Uh, you know, look, this this Fremont team, they've got a freshman goalie, Kimball Gibson, getting the start today. He's right about 500 save percentage. So it's a young group for Coach Brad Searle. But this Harriman squad, I would say – you know, Tim, maybe, um, I don't want to say slipped through the cracks, but but maybe a, a team that didn't get a lot of publicity this year out of Region 3. All the talk about Mountain Region, Bingham, we saw Riverton, thought that team has good capability. This team actually finished third in that region in a very competitive Region 3. Yeah, you know, they're well coached. Uh, coach Lance is a great guy, great coach. Uh, they have a lot of heart. Harriman's been a great program for a long time, ever since they were basically instituted. They were decimated a little bit in talent uh, with Mountain, Mountain Ridge opening. Ridge you know, uh, which is expected. So a bunch of these guys, Dane, they started and played last year, right? Because there was no one ahead of them because they yeah. were all at Mount Ridge. Yeah. That's well kept here by Fremont. We talked about Asher Deputy, the starting goalie today, the junior for Harriman. Top goal scorers on the year, Parker Sorensen, the freshman, 26 goals, 28 assists. Enoch Ulaberry, the senior, 23 goals, and Tate McCoy, 22. Certainly... 117 goals on the year, as reported. Is that pass lost out here by Fremont? It'll go to Harriman. If the Mustangs want to win today, they've got to slow down that Fremont scoring. And, you know, you, you make them be uh, a little more disciplined in their attack and get some stops, you, you've got an opportunity. you got to clear the ball, though, Dane. Yeah, Two field clears so far for yep. the Mustangs. Uh, we'll see if that's a key moving forward. Here's Davis Sur, a little hesitation. Another big save there by Deputy. He looks locked in here early. We do want to let you know the clock you see on your screen, unofficial. We do our best to keep that synchronized with the game clock here in the stadium. At times, you'll see it start early, start it late. And we've got a timeout here taken by Harriman. Probably a good one, Tim, to your point. When you get stops, you got to clear it. And a chance for uh, Coach Lance here to discuss. You know, it's tricky because his guy beat three guys. You know, he was trying to call that timeout before he got in trouble and, and made that a third fail clear. Maybe managed to get through and... It's always the biggest disappointment as a coach when you call a timeout that you shouldn't have. But good opportunity to, to reset here for the Mustangs. Dane, I don't know if you noticed, but it looked like they only had five or six guys suited on the bench. So, so that may come into be a factor later in this one as, as uh, we, we progress through this one. But good opportunity for Coach to get in there and, and remind the team how to clear yeah, <laughs> properly. Uh, the bench certainly looks deeper for Fremont, although the roster size looks larger <laughs> for Harriman. It's an interesting dynamic. Um, you know, There are some kids in sweats for Harriman today. Fremont, look, this is a team. We saw them last week against Farmington. They were dealing with some things kind of off the off the field. Uh, look like a team that's got you know, more of their depth back today. Um, be interesting to see how that plays out. They are missing Corbin Child as well as Jarek Burton. But uh, fun matchup. We talked about the 6'11 seed here in the state tournament and uh, potential opportunities to advance to take on the winner of Mountain Ridge and Sky Ridge in the uh, 6A state tournament. Yep, should be fun. A couple other scores coming in. Westlake, another uh, you know beat Bingham, uh, six to five in overtime. That uh, that was a game I think we all kind of had circled. Six and, to five. Yeah, low score. Wow. Getting to the playoffs, your defense starts to show up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, an overtime win though. It's exciting. Trying to advance this up. Here comes Harriman. First time they've entered the offensive zone with possession today. And now they will. Set things up here. Sorensen working near side with it. 
being defended by Brim Hall. Sorensen curling back. Good help defensively. Has it jarred loose. Oh, how about the spin move there from Clark? Silver Wolves on the run. Pushing ahead here with Searle. Davis giving it over with Reese. Boston. Working to the angle. Now back to X. Satterweight plays out. Isaac's in such a big frame. Carson, the shot and the goal scored from Carson Isaacson. One nothing Fremont. Using that big frame to his advantage, just gets past his man. You know, that's an easy shot for him. That's just a, a dunk shot there as, as he finds the back of the net to, to give Fremont the early lead. I'd like to take the opportunity to also recognize he had a rip a little earlier, just missed it. We talked about some of the big saves that Deputy had made. It's one where when you get early stops, you got to capitalize offensively, and Herman hasn't been able to do that. See if they can get a response here. And you know, we talk about face-offs, such a big part of the game. And Corbin Platt, this young man, he can be a problem from the spot for Fremont. Such a such a key part to the game is the face-off. See the last two the last two face offs he's taken, he's kinda come up and pushed the guy away and then come away with a clamp, which is an interesting strategy. We'll see uh, we'll see how it pans out. Isaac Sam actually found that one for Harriman. Mustang's on it. Trying to work this in front of the cage. Back to X curling around, little ground shot there, saved. No! <laughs> that goal. did cross the line. Count the goal for Harriman. I thought Gibson had it, but nay, nay, we're tied up. I think this will be a, an important thing to watch as this game progresses is, you know, can Harriman get their shots off? I think if they are able to get good shots off, uh, the, the the ball will find the back of the net. I think the freshman, Parker Sorensen, there with the goal for Harriman. So his 27th of the year. And talk about the youth for Fremont. How about the youth of Harriman? Face off gathered by Fremont. Clark had it lost. Now we'll get whistles here. And hold. Give it back to Silver Wolves. Little extracurriculars after the whistle, after the bod popped out there. Referees thought it was a hold. So that's a fair call. Fair call. <laughs> Trying to keep Reese here outside as they push him back top of the box. Boston. Back to Satter or to Barry, my apologies. That shot wide, backed up here. And with Reese. Barry. Airman defensively. Looked pretty locked in here early. Big shot there and off the pipe. Tell you, Deputy does appear like he's pretty locked in here early. Yeah, he's a fantastic goalie. He plays a lot of club lacrosse as well, you know, so he's seen shots left and right all year long and, and uh, you know, Probably really one of the big key successes here to the, the Mustang season so far. Back at X, Satterway coming near side, right in front. Yeah. And that hit off the pipe, I believe. And they say it is backed up here. Well, that was one that Harriman would have loved to have had. <laughs> Close call. Close call. I think the tie goes to the runner. Isn't that the scene? That's it, the scene. it is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what baseball hat Tim's going to show up in. He's got his A game tonight. Another shot here. This one just wide, backed up again. This is uh, the old great outdoor pack from Hat Club. That is California fan. Angels. I, I'm telling you, man, that's that's the best one you've worn all year. I, uh, I bought a new Boston hat today, so I'll have to uh, yeah, I, I, I can't I can't support that. Here's Isaacson. Oh, good save put on there by Deputy, who continues to play strong here in quarter number one. As a Pirates fan, I get tired of you guys, you know. <laughs> is, Pirate, is Pirates a baseball team? No, no, we're not. 
one of these days we're going to trade our field. <laughs> Here's Brim Hall. Giving it with Reese, Boston. A lot of possession for Fremont here in the first. Just the one goal to show for it. It's the, tr it's the you know, it's the failed clears by Harriman. They got to clean that up. They are facing into the brisk into the wind. wind. Yep. Probably what? Scott, 40 degrees out there maybe? It's, it's chilly. It's, it's not warm. <laughs> Big run by Reese. Working behind. Good stick work there by Harriman to prevent a good look. And the Mustangs coming out on the run, keeping his footing. Fleet of foot here. Chandler Smith pushing it up, the sophomore. You see that defense come over. Great effort by Smith. That's that's what it's going to take, those kind of efforts for uh, you know Harriman to, to win this game. Trying to work around, Sorensen plays back over. All open on the wing, and the lead to Harriman. Great ball movement, and it's Max Schultz scoring the goal. Like you said, Dan, just great ball movement there by the Mustangs, able to get his hands free. No slide coming from the defense, and he, he likes that spot. That uh, little Jordan Hyde-esque. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, I thought Fremont was really aggressive defensively, and on all that help, all the slides, it. Leaves an open sophomore in Max Schultz and scoring uh, unofficially his second goal of the year, according to stats reported. Is that is that three sophomores that have scored in this game? Uh, yes, it is. Wow. No, two sophomores and a freshman. So oh. it's in a freshman. I so <laughs> love it. You've got to keep you right, I love it. Tim. You know. No, I love it. That's awesome. I'll tell you the uh, the roots of lacrosse strong here in the state of Utah. <laughs> awesome to see a lot of youngsters getting more time, totally. establishing and. Just means this game going to continue to get better and better as the year go years go on. Is offside here called? Yeah, yep. that's the right call. Good call. Why not? Deputy plays that ahead. Uh, run into his own man. Erickson couldn't capture it first. Here's Isaacson. Carson. All the way and the finish. Goal scored by Isaacson. His second ties us up at two. Another failed clear there by Harriman, and, and this time Fremont takes advantage of it. He had a pretty much a wide open lane the whole way. Uh, you know, if you're if you're that defender, you gotta you gotta push him out. Stop the right? ball. You can't just run with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and uh, Isaacson doing what he does best, taking advantage of the opportunity and putting it in the back of the net. Two apiece here, just over four to play. These two teams, the only uh, common opponent they had was Syracuse. Mm. Harriman defeated the Titans seven one. Fremont. 17-7 the first matchup, 18-5 the second against the Titans. As we've got the hold there, it'll be Harriman possession. Still on it, here is Isaac Sam. Played up top with Schultz. Do have a penalty flag on the play, so there will be a man-up opportunity coming for Harriman. Unless they are to score a goal here. McCoy works back up with Ulibarri. and I'm kind of like, look, he got the penalty. Hold this thing out, right? I mean, you're underdog on the road. Like, I know you attack eventually, but what's the rush, huh? Yeah, no, absolutely, right? Get in your offensive set. Give your defense a time to rest. Uh, you know, look for the best shot you can take. Great shot there. Just just sail a little wide. Yeah, that backed up. Harriman will have it, but they'll also go man up. Here's the penalty being enforced. Call looking to be a push there. So 30-second man up opportunity here for the Mustangs.
These are the kind of moments, Tim. We've seen it all year long. Executing man up, so critical. See if Harriman can do it here. Yeah, you get a couple a couple opportunities a game. If if you can be a high percentage man up squad, good things will happen. That one just missed by Parker Mortensen. Fremont trying to get on the possession. This being kicked around. Check there, jarred it loose momentarily. Again, as Brimhall doing his best to get it here for Fremont. And now we've got the timeout taken by the Silver Wolves. Timeout, Fremont. 2.40 to go here in the first. You're watching Game Night Live Rewind's coverage of the 6A State Tournament only on kslsports.com. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift. Or if my kid had a fever. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time. And speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time. Courses on your time. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome back. Of course, Game Night Live Rewinds presented by Heidemann Associates. If you have any legal needs, contact the experts at Heidemann and Associates. Tell them Rewind sent you. You'll get a free consultation. Call 801 754 4240. First full service law firm at Heidman and Associates. Fremont killing off the man down situation <laughs> and uh, clamoring for an offside call. And the official here gonna have a brief conversation with the silent guys. It's breathe. There's some there's some black and white calls in lacrosse. There aren't many. That's like, one. That's one. <laughs> that is one of them. A lot of the calls are, are judgment. You know, they look at positioning. They look at advantage, stuff like that. But but offsides is, is clear one, clearly one of them there. And, and you do see most refs call that. Here's Reese. Saved. Deputy again. Well, you got to get rid of this and does. That pass intended. Too much on it. Being pressured here by Sorensen as Fremont working through that. Final 90 seconds here of our opening quarter. Brimhall. Ah, hit the brakes there. Here's Rumsey. Over with Satterweight. Down to the angle. As they bring Reese on here. Working in front. Oh, beautiful eyes. Love the shots. Three, two, the advantage for the Silver Wolves and Platt with another win. Chance to put a little separation here. Late in the quarter is Harriman coming up with a turnover. Keel, not, uh, you know, he's still a little mad at that last goal, so took it to him and had the nice takeaway check. Excellent play. Working up. Here's Parker Sorensen. Parker still on it. That's a good stick check there by Becker. Now we've got the loose ball push, I believe. That's right, loose ball push. 18, 18 seconds left. Wired right in front, and that was just wide. And they say one there. Boy, great burst there by Gibson. Excellent play by Gibson. Sees that that's going wide and immediately takes out of the cage to get that back up. Big, uh, big opportunity there. Fremont, they've got... 10 seconds left. Graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome back. Start of quarter number two. Dane Stewart, Tim Haslam. Ah, Tim, playoffs, huh? Love so it. awesome. Yep, gotta love it. So awesome. We talked about Westlake beating Bingham in overtime and another great one sizing up here. We asked both coaches staff to keep this one close. That's right. Guys, don't, don't let this get too far out, right? <laughs> like we're on the stream. We want a competitive. They've adhered to it so far. Yeah, so. good guys. I'm teasing. 
Fremont here working from X. Searle coming around, working out, angle shot, and couldn't tell if that was deflected. It is backed up. It's good ball movement there. You know, get the get the defense moving, get the hands, hands free, and a, and a great shot. That win continues to just howl. We have switched ends here. And illegal screen. Ah, Moving screen. Okay. Huh. To be fair, the ref was five yards away. We're about 50. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why I typically don't comment on flags. It's like, <laughs> right. look, I've, I've got the worst angle out of anybody. I think the only call we have the great angle for is offsides. That, that we, might be the only one. Maybe a little a little bit easier. Bounce shot. Oh, what a goal from Harriman. Boy, that one kind of ricocheted all around. Uh, scored, is that Strasters maybe? Number 11? Number tricky, 10. Tricky to tell here as we run off. We'll be able to it's see Elgren. that. Great goal, though. Just able to, you know, kind of juke around. And then textbook bounce shot, which, of course, we love to see hitting that top shelf. Excellent, excellent placement. Avery Elgren, the junior attackman, getting the goal for Harriman to pull us back even. Back to the spot here. Face off. All oh, could have been one. Was missed. Still being swept around. Now gathered. Bit of a run out here for Romander. Plays wide, big shot. Backed up. It's a heads up play there by uh, Becker. You know, he he wins that ground ball, looks up, notices he has three guys around him. You know, that naturally means that you've got two guys open. Wisely just backs it up, dumps it over the defense. Excellent, excellent play. Barry, Bad X. No illegal screen there. That was set for a while. Very clean. Reese trying to peel inside of the double team. Now a triple team here is both teams scrounging for possession, and that picked up by Harriman. Ryan Keel coming out with it. That is a big freshman there wearing number 33 <laughs> for Harriman. Lots of big players. Even the, even the Fremont sophomores are, are big, big guys. Yeah. So. A lot of size in this game. Uh, that's you know that's why it was uh, one of the matchups we we keyed on on keyed in on. Thought it would be a great a great ball game. That's why we don't say anything negative about athletes. They could they could beat me up pretty easily. That uh, one just kept out. Boy, that almost looked like a changeup. Almost <laughs> caught Gibson, but did track it and makes the save. That that's a key save for Gibson. You know he's kind of struggled so far in this one. Uh, you know, but just able to get his stick down and, and get in front of it. Unfortunately, with the turnover there, but making that save will pay dividends later for them. Remember, Harriman struggled to clear it on this south end. There, that time a struggle from Fremont. Worked over backside. Oh, how about the play for the Mustangs as they retake the lead? I'm not sure if that was an intentional pass, Dane. It looked it like it might have been, been uh, a little bit of a shot, but uh, just excellent heads-up play there by the Mustangs. Able to put that one in the back of the net and regain this lead. Tate McCoy credited with the goal. Number 23 on the season for Tate. How about four goals for Harriman by four different goal scorers, Tim? In the playoffs, man, you need depth. And again, we talked about their short bench. Uh, you know, that depth is so key. Uh, it's good to see the the different the different goal scorers there. And, man, for, for a team that got off the bus at 6'10 <laughs> for a 6'30 game, they're playing really well in this one. Look, I heard stories back in the fall of buses breaking oh, down. Oh, and, uh, I mean, even Corner Canyon Lacrosse, right, heading to Colorado. I think they ran into That's some right. road trouble. You just they did. never quite know. And, ah, Fremont. Quick response, a penalty flag here on the play. The goal will count as it's Carson Isaacson with the early hat trick. Just taking it into his own hands there. Isaacson, a great player. No stick is going to stop him. You got to stop him with your body, and that's what Harriman tried to do there. But as he was falling to the ground, able to slot it past Deputy. That's a young man. I mean, even watching against Farmington that game, I did it's like, man, he's he's going to be good. Yeah, he already is. Yeah, I, I mean, how many how many goals did the two of them have this year so far? Uh, Carson has 56. Davis with 58. I believe they were around those numbers last year, too. So yeah, you're talking probably. about kids who are sophomores who have over 100 goals in their career already. We got a timeout taken here by Harriman. Carson now sitting at a square 59 goals on the season. Searle with 59. So we got a two-way battle here for top 
scoring on Fremont. But uh, they'll have some time here to, 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 you know, juke it out as we head to a break. Time out here at Fremont. Welcome back. Our cameraman is okay. Verified that. All good here. 9.27 to go here, first half. Another face-off win for Fremont. Tim, they have been dominative from the X today. They have, and, and that's a good sign for this Fremont squad. You know, it doesn't always translate to wins, but if you can win the majority of the face-offs, your what, likelihood what, is a high. What it does is it forces the other team to play defense in order to stay in it, right? Yeah, you know, and, and look, Harriman's done a great job, right, with Deputy. Uh, he's he's a great goalie back there for the, for the Mustangs, and, um, you know, they've done a good job so far. Played over with Searle. Isaacson. Oh, good ball movement. Tell you, I thought they were going to take that shot near side. Instead, they send it out to Boston Reese, and he scores his first of the game. You got to love the unselfish play there uh, from this Fremont man-up team. Able to share the ball, move it around, and then that cross-field skip pass. And just a rocket found its way in the back of the net. 5-4 Fremont. Off the Boston Reese goal. And Herman just coming out of a timeout to concede that. You're talking about face-off wins. Good look, patience, ball movement, back in the net. Probably not uh, how Herman would have loved to have come out of that, that timeout. Another face-off and a key win there for Harriman. It was Sam Erickson on, well, getting the win for the Mustangs. Back at X. Then you'll notice Fremont went to more of a traditional 3-3 zone on yeah. their defensive set here. See how Harriman can uh, respond to that. Usually you've practiced against the zone at some point, uh, but we'll see if the Mustangs can break it. Tim, do you work this side to side? Do you try to break it down by levels? How, how do you work against the zone? you got to have cutters, first of all, right? Because that'll suck the defense in, and then that'll open you up for an outside shot if you can move that ball around. But it's got to have that quick ball movement. A pass there that couldn't be handled, and Harriman turns it over. That pass a little behind. Ground ball here, trying to be scooped out. Continuing to try to possess it, and now we will get a stoppage here. It'll be Harriman possession. Collisions as both teams <laughs> jockeying for the possession. I think it's uh, Romander that comes away with it for Fremont. The wind is real. <laughs> I mean, it's, the effects it's having, especially on that south end, have been stated and felt by both sides. Yeah, the team that's been in that south end, like you mentioned. It's been a nightmare. It's been a struggle. Yeah. Harriman on it. Approaching the midway point here of quarter number two. Angle. Boy, tough shot. Backed up there by Harriman. Trying to get it right in front. That was just a little tall. Kept here. Hendrickson. Back, or the bounce shot there backed up. That's the kind of ball movement you want to see, right? That was a great look in front. Just didn't quite connect. And then, uh, you know, able to track it down at the top and, and get a good shot off. Got to get that on cage, though, Dane. This is the playoffs. Yep. No time for missed shots. Yep. Running start here for Tate McCoy. Tried to give it to the wing there. We do have a flag here as uh, 
Fremont gathers, and now we'll get the enforcement. It'll be man up here for Harriman. Slash there, the call. So man up opportunity here for a minute for the Mustangs. I said it was McCoy up top. My apologies. It was Uliberry. He'll put this in play, and now we got a late penalty flag coming on. I think oh, the, just giving it back. The okay. one official is giving it to the other. He's trying to share. The wing, the wing yeah, took yeah, it, so it looked yeah. like he'd thrown it. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Uliberry in play for Harriman. Six minutes to go here in the half. Boy, tough pass there. Couldn't be handled by McCoy. I kind of caught him, Tim. Ah, that's that's unfortunate for the Mustangs. You know, you, you get a man up opportunity. Really liking your chances. Two passes later, and it's out of bounds. That's yeah. that's tough. Kind of got caught with it on the cuff. Another pass here off target, and Harriman will have the inbound. Is inbound the right term? Probably not. Uh, not really an inbound. Yeah. You can call it that. They'll start with possession off the out-of-bounds. Yeah. Nice little juke. Shot there. And oh, another time where Gibson able to win it there for Fremont. That's twice so far he's, yep. he's come out of cage and, and just a great move there. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of an inherent talent that some of these great goalies have, uh, able to recognize when that's going to go wide and then have the presence of mind to, to get out of cage. Oh, no. <laughs> Get They're, out of cage and go get it. The goalie depth for Fremont has been tested this year. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, give props to a young man that hasn't played goalie for a while, coming in, done a good job. Just a freshman. They work it in front. Oh, big save there by Gibson. That's a good look for Harriman. Great look for Harriman and, and a great save by Gibson. That's exactly what we're talking about. You know, you start getting more of these saves, he starts to build his confidence. I thought you know. we were – Thought we were going to have a scrum instead of possession here for Harriman. Still man up. Uh, no longer. As Gibson corrals it. Fremont was kind of looking like, hey, you got an outlet. I think he was like, I don't want any piece of that. Yeah, like, that we're would, into the wind, man. Exactly. That would come right back to yep. him like a boomerang. Yep. Here comes Brim Hall. Swings right to the middle. Jump shot and a goal for Fremont. Ah, oh, Davis Searle scoring number 60. That's what makes Searle and Isaacson so dangerous, right? You get them in transition. They're able to, to get their hands free. Just great ball move or great off ball movement by both of those players. Uh, you know, and Searle just able to get that nice little lefty jump shot. He's a big frame already. So, you know, that ball's coming 10, 12 feet in the air down, and, and that's hard to stop. Four forty-four mm. left in our first half. Fremont team up in Region One. They were stout, ten and four in region play. Going up against the likes of Davis, lost to Davis both times in one goal deficit games. Split against Farmington it was a good year for them and a team that did not have much test outside of region, given the uh, structure of Region One and the schedule. So really their first 6A opponent they've played this year outside of Region 1, Tim. That's right. You know, and, and uh, so far so good. You, you did mention, you know, they go up against Davis, and that's turned into just a nice little rivalry. Yeah. Uh, I think the last three or four contests spanning the last couple of years have been one-goal games. Uh, so it's exciting to watch them play. This year was no different. I saw them play down in, in Kaysville, and it was just a phenomenal game. Nice breakdown. Back of the net for Davis Searle again as they find him. Kind of that second level, quick shot, and it's a three-goal lead. The same spot on the field, same movement, just kind of a mirror there for Cyril, right? That, that last one was a lefty. This one's a righty. He's, he's just cutting it across. Uh, that's a symptom of ball watching, right? If you're the Harriman defense, got to pay attention to where he's at, where he's moving, and, and stay on him. Four unanswered goals for Fremont. I think it was 4-3, if I recall. That's right. Would have had the loose ball push, and there we'll get it. And with Fremont, Platt, he'll come off here.
Reese. Boston. Nice job pushing him there wide by Chandler Smith. Reese has it back. Isaacson. Still on it. Another goal scored by Davis Searle. <laughs> That's why they're so dangerous at attack. Uh, Searle and Isaacson just able to get their hands free. Just great ball movement by Fremont. They knew that they had that Harriman defense working. Slow recovery there by the Mustangs and just takes advantage of it. They're starting to heat up. That's trouble for the Mustangs. It is. Look, that defense was holding early. But Davis Searle, four goals in the game, three in the last, I don't know, three minutes or so. and Not even that. Yeah. The last three possessions. Yeah. Face-off win to Fremont. Isaacson works in front. It is a Silver Wolf rush right now. Is this one Caden Berry with the goal? Again, just excellent ball movement. Starts there at the face-off X. Again, Harriman, you know, they're doing a good job at kind of covering that one, but they need to get back for that two, that three, uh, in order to stop Fremont. Man. So it feels like the last couple of possessions, Fremont has been going Kramer. Levels, Jerry. <laughs> levels. And just, I mean, just sucking that defense up and then getting great open looks is here we'll get the uh, small push and Harriman will have it. One of my favorite Seinfeld references. I Levels, love it. Jerry. Anyway. A couple scores coming in, Dane. Yeah. Uh, at the half, Davis up 10 to 1 on Whew. Copper Hills. Wow. It's another Region 1, Region, region three. 3 matchup. Yep. Uh, Weber leading Riverton 5 to 3 at the end of the first quarter. Another Region 1, Region 3 matchup. That's right. So Region 1 feeling good here. And they just leave Region 4 to play each other. Yeah, right? <laughs> smart, smart. That's right. <laughs> we planned it that way. Well, that check came up to the head. Now we'll get the whistle and the flag here on the play. We uh, we will have all the 6A, 5A, 4A semifinals and championships for you right here on kslsports.com. Also want to let you know, hey, look, it's, it's kind of a different era. We're playing playoff games on a Saturday. Yeah. So uh, we're looking at schedules. If there's a game you want us to cover, Hit us up on Instagram, on Twitter, at GNL Rewind. Let us know where you'd like us to be. We, we're not going to lie. That decision's not made. But it's going to take some convincing to pull us from where we're thinking. So, sure. uh, you know. We're also taking into account the girls' side of the sport and, and how that plays into the strategy as well. So We did a doubleheader today. In fact, the girls' game was fantastic. Riverton got the upset win over Fremont. Very yeah. competitive, fun game. In play here with Fremont, and boy, Harriman really can't give up another goal. I mean, just the surge that we've seen in this second quarter, you got to feel like got to have something positive going into halftime. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that can start with a, a big save, maybe a big takeaway check. Uh, something, though, you're right, to get some of the momentum back in your corner. See if they can make that adjustment in the second half. Because the penalties are coming, right? They're getting their opportunities. So we'll, we'll see if uh, they can fix that at halftime. Isaacson with it as we approach the final minute of play. Apologize there for just a little glitch. Had an energy issue, I believe, but we, we got it all resolved. Isaacson out with Reese. 50 seconds left in the frame. Right in front and a goal. Guess who? <laughs> hmm. Searle? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> wow. Just great ball movement there. Again, it's the same thing, Dave. Uh, you know, they kind of draw the defense away from up top, and then they find Searle either coming around the crease or working in front of the crease. And 
that's just what makes them so dangerous. That's why, you know, that's why they're in the position they're in, the six seed, uh, you know, doing well in region. And again, again, Dan, just sophomores. He's He's got to be a cowboy. You know how I know that? How? Because he's breaking Mustangs nah, here in the first nah, half. You I like that? I like that. No, that's great. I probably have some Harriman fans that don't like that. That's okay. My apologies. But, yeah. you know, we try to keep it light. And <laughs> that's right. I fun, love it. no offense taken to it. Yeah, it's all fun and games. It has been Davis Searle in the second quarter, and he's been the difference. Four goals in the quarter, five in the game for Davis. Ten to four the lead. Fremont with a chance for more. We'll get the uh, infraction there, and it will be Fremont possession. Man, the grasp they've taken, Tim, these last six minutes. Feels like a different game. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the old Pat Summit saying, right? You can't win a game in the first half, but you can sure lose one. Yeah. And so that's uh, unfortunately where the direction Harriman's headed. Timeout, Fremont. We'll take it with them. Be back with the final 35 seconds of the first half. 35 seconds to go here in the first half. Fremont leading Harriman 10-4 with the ball. Dane Stewart, Tim Haslam from the Utah Lacks Report. 7-0 run here from Fremont in quarter number two. Searle. Stepped into the box there. Shot save put on there by Deputy. Herman with it. Trying to work through here. Final 10 seconds. Mustangs on the run. Get a penalty flag here. Tim, do you take the shot? Do you hold no, it? No, you got to hold it. That should be another one. But it came out. Yep. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if they had it. Because so, you had the flag here of the cross check, right? Right. And then this other one right, down here is, right. a, is the push. So that should have stopped the play because there's two different flags down. But there would have been like a fraction. And, and do you put time on? Uh, I wouldn't put time on, but I would. But give you give them possession the ball. to Harry. I would. Okay. But we'll see what the, we'll see what ends up happening. It, it's halftime. They're not putting time on. Halftime here. Second round action. Fremont leading Harriman. Harriman will be manned up to start the second half. We'll see if there's more to it. Halftime. We'll join you in ten minutes with the second half. You're watching the second round of the 6A state tournament only on KSLSports.com. Don't forget during halftime. College wasn't built for me. It didn't care if I had to work a double shift or if my kid had a fever. Deadline's a deadline. I want to set the deadlines. I want to take tests when I'm ready. I want to take courses on my time and speed up when I know my stuff. I want a university that cares about me. Tests on your time, courses on your time, graduate on your time. WGU, the nonprofit university of you. Welcome in, start of half number two, Tim. I don't know what's going on. I don't know lacrosse anymore, man. <laughs> this is crazy, okay? So Fremont has two men down. They got the two penalties at the end of the quarter. Harriman had the ball, though. But then it got pushed out, and that was that second flag. So Fremont's going to start with it. My guess, Dane, is they went to, like, an alternating possession. And maybe it uh, went to Fremont. Look, I don't know the rule book. I would love for someone to explain this to me. Because, I mean, we were talking at halftime. It's like, look, the second penalty forced the ball to come out. It should have been stopping the clock at the second penalty. So put a half second on, let Harriman start with. I mean, right. I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Here's a flag. Fremont looking for the shorty, and they get it. Camden Satterwaite with his first of the game, 11 4. So, so not to. Not to dwell on this too much, Dane, but say that, you know, Fremont knocks the ball out, say that it's loose when the quarter ends, that would mean that it would then go to a faceoff. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not quite sure why Fremont got that one. I'm going to have to email the coaches or the refs after that one. Well, I probably wouldn't email the Harriman coaches. You might want to email <laughs> he's a the nice Fremont guy. coaches. No, he's a nice no, guy. No, I know, but I'd be like, <laughs> what, what? What is going on? I'm going to email both at the same time, and, <laughs> I, and we'll see what we get. <laughs> I, look, I, I acknowledge I'm still learning, but I do not understand it. And I might be making a big deal out of nothing. He, Coach Lance might get it. I don't. Interesting. Just an interesting series of events, and then obviously leads to a Fremont goal and a Harriman penalty. 
when it should have probably, and again, I'm not a ref, but it probably should have been Harriman's ball to start with. Yeah, even Lemony Snicket's doesn't quite understand that, but <laughs> here's uh, Fremont with again another faceoff win. Platt, I mean, he's what, 570 from the spot this year, but he's got to be 700 today. Big windup that was deflected. Platt has been playing well. Been uh, certainly the difference maker, I, I would say, in yeah. this. Him and Searle yeah. obviously have, have had stellar games so far. Boy, miscommunication on the defensive switch. Unfortunate that uh, that one wasn't handled well. Fremont's still on it here. Working behind. Such quick ball movement today by Fremont as that was deflected and captured by Deputy, but this is a team that has played with a little extra step. I don't quite know what that stoppage is for. Stoppage in play. The, the Fremont player didn't have his mouthpiece in. Okay. The ref. We apologize for the clock malfunction. Our intern just recognizing that. He thought he was graduating. <laughs> That's not the case yet. Airman with it. That one taken away out of the air by Becker. Silver Wolves pushing ahead. They've got numbers here. A Romander working over right in front. That did not go in. <laughs> it went off the pipe. That's incredible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that went from being like a top goal of the year to betraying him on, on yeah. the home goal nonetheless. Yeah, that's what those pipes will do to you. Wow. Great great fast break play, though, by, by Fremont. Another one poked away there, this time by Isaacson. Deputy retreating back to Cage, and Isaacson with the goal. Again, you know, these teams in the south end zone are having this trouble clearing. You see it again there, Fremont, though, able to capitalize. Looks like he went with uh, what they call the Canadian lefty, Dane. You got it in your right hand, you bring it across and kind of backhand it in. It's a tricky little shot. Usually that comes with maple syrup. Usually. Canadian. I yeah, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, four goals today for Isaacson, five for Searle. <sighs> this game was close, the first right? quarter. It was 4-3. Yeah. yeah, we, we had a run. We had a great one, but Fremont just using the home field to their advantage. I'm going to have to have a talk with Coach Searle. He's not living up to the end of the bargain. <laughs> close, Coach, close. This ball drifting back. Ground ball captured there by Harriman. Now not quite. There it is. Finally secured with a little uh, little time there by Jenkins. Here's Platt. Corbin, he's got guys running away from him, trying to get back in defensive positioning. He'll peel off as Isaacson with it here. Isaacson lost his footing. Aaron here trying to possess it. Instead, it's Fremont coming away with it. Brimhall plays with Satterwaite. Cam. Isaacson. Good setup. Isaacson the shot. Oh, that went in. I thought that was wide. <laughs> Another goal for... Carson Isaacson. Yeah, it did look like that was headed wide. Must have just hit off the stick there of Deputy and, and found the back of the net. Pretty much sums up the uh, the night here for the for the Mustangs. Played that great first quarter, super close. And Fremont just putting it to him, walking away with this one. We talked about the depth today for Harriman. The, the bench is not deep, right? We, we talked about that. And uh, look, the way they started, like, hey, they might be able to, you know, hang around in this one, but. I mean, it's it's just become you know being a little out muscled here. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm looking at the bench. They got six middies, and a and a backup goalie. So really, you're running six subs. Uh, you know, your poles haven't had a sub. They're not running an LSM on the wings. So tricky, uh, 
tricky position to be in if you're Harriman. Again, you know, your bus shows up here at, at 6 for a 6.30 game. Uh, you know, just not their night. I, I heard one player in, in the restroom before go, he was talking to another player. He said, man, we got to drive home in that too. <laughs> so <laughs> already not looking forward to the ride yeah. home. Big shot. And that one backed up here. These two teams both had first round buys. Big wind up. That was wide. The winner of this to play the winner of American Fork and Sky Ridge. An interesting game tonight down between region four rivals. AF, the three seed. I think people up here, maybe not too surprised. Tim, you weren't surprised. I was surprised. But uh, that one hit off the pipe on the shot there by Reese as uh, Davis the two and AF the three. You thought, you thought. AF would be the two? I thought they had potential to be the two. Okay. I mean, I think, um, you know, if I were to rank teams, and um, Tim, I know there's some some nice jest between you and Davis fans, right? But but I think having seen them, I, I would say, yeah, AF is, I would say they're probably the second best team in 6A. I think they and Davis would be competitive. Oh, yeah, but totally. I, but I think AF is, is that good defensively, offensively. I mean, we've seen them this year. It's like they, they're – they are really good. So, so one of the flaws with the RPI, and and there's probably many, um, is that it doesn't take into account strength of schedule. Yeah. And so win and loss records are a big part of that. And Davis with just the one loss this year. Right. Uh, that coming to Corner Canyon, uh, you know, American Fork I think had well at least two, maybe a third. Did they have three, or did they just lose to Corner Canyon? I think they just lost to Corner. AF. Canyon. Yeah. I think they just lost to Corner. So they had the two losses. Yeah. So that's ultimately what uh, kind of put them ahead there. And it's fine. I mean, you look, playoffs, you play it out, right? I mean, yeah, if you have a problem with your seating, go win games. Yeah, they're going to see each other the, in the semifinals anyway. So, but, you know, there's a little bit of pride and sure. all, that, all that stuff. Sure, and, sure. You know, the difference is Davis is playing Copper Hills right now and American Force playing Sky Ridge. Well, those two programs, Copper Hills and Sky Ridge, are virtually the same. I mean, I'll tell you this. This is just my opinion. If I'm a Fremont fan, I'm saying I'd rather play Davis than play AF. We, we played Davis yeah. twice this year. Both of them were yeah. one-goal games. I'd love to have another whack at that. And totally. AF's like, man, they're big, they're long, they're fast, the defense locks you down. Like, I, I don't know. Uh. Yeah, right. So, you know, and well, maybe well, Fremont feels differently. That's and, just my opinion. And for American Fork, you're dealing with the Bazant at the faceoff. Right. Right? I mean, like, you don't, you don't, yeah. Platts, Platts. Uh, not going to win Just many of Just book it. Book it, Dano. <laughs> like they get the face off. So another goal here for Fremont is pushed to a 10-goal difference and an 11-0 run. And, and this is a tricky game for the American run Fork, a, a, assuming they win. Uh, the American Fork coaches, as they, uh, you know, will probably review this game and go, man, Fremont's playing really well, really at a high level. But, uh, you know, they got to be aware of, of just the, the competition and, and seeing how – they move here. It'll be interesting to see the McKay Locke Davis Searle matchup. Yeah, yeah, right. Some yeah. of these other polls, Bazant going against I Isaacson, and yeah, that that'll be a fun game. Uh, and, and look, I don't mean to you know slam Fremont or Davis at all. That that's not the intention. I, I think it'll it'll they'll be fun matchups. It'll be really interesting because for me, some of it is, and we talked about this a bit at the start. I mean, Fremont had two non-region games. So, right. you know, if I am Fremont, I was like, well, I'd rather play AF because I want to play someone outside. Or I, I don't right. want to play Davis a third time. Right. I already played him twice. Like, let's play someone else. So I, I get that angle of it, too. But, uh, look, it's it gets real serious real fast. I would say, though, if if playing a team the third time, you know, they kind of have that thing where it's hard to beat a team three times in a, in a season. If playing Davis meant a better chance at advancing, I'd I think take they it. would choose Davis. Yeah, so. yeah I would, too. Namba had uh, the deflection there for Harriman defensively. It, it'll be interesting to see when Coach Shrill subs some of these guys out, right? You don't want to take away the momentum of, of his son, Searle, and, and Isaacson and some of these other offensive minis. You know, you want to have them keep their rhythm. But at the same time, Dane, you know, we're probably talking about a less than 48-hour turnaround. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, semi or the quarterfinal game maybe at like a one or a two on Saturday. Uh, you know, and so it'll be interesting to see how he manages the subs there. Well, in my mind, maybe that's it, right? Hey, we get another goal. It's 11. We've got insurance. We're running things here. Yeah. You know, now now we can just kind of work work the clock off. And 
we'll see if that's the case or not. Isaacson now with his sixth of the game. And a timeout taken here by Harriman. 15-4, all Fremont here in the second round. Welcome back. Dean Stewart, Tim Haslam, Utah Lacks Report. Mentioned other games. Right now, Weber, uh, Riverton, Region 1, Region 3. Weber up in that one, 10-7 at the break. So, uh, you know, talk about Region 1, feeling pretty good. And yeah, it should be. Davis up big on Copper Hills at the moment as well. The last score I saw was 18-2 to two in the third. So, really, you know really curious about that Lone Peak Farmington game. Yeah, yeah, that is that is a doozy. That was one we thought about long and hard. Um, thought that would be a really good one. Big wind up there, shot just wide. Um, you know, one of the items, you talk a little bit, Tim, about uh, this Fremont team. How long do you play starters? You know, we even had a... Talking to Fremont people before the game said, well, it kind of depends what team shows up. So if you're Coach Searle, you don't necessarily want to take away the momentum that you're right. that you're finding, right? You're right. getting back to. Um, this was how this team looked at the start of the year when it was scoring a bunch and competing with Dave. It was like, so you want your players to get custom, accustomed back to that rhythm and that mojo. Oh, my goodness. And uh, that draws some cheers, but... Only from one side. That's not a good. That's like a definition of, uh, you know, he had he took a running start, which they look at. It was to the head, which they'll obviously look at. We've yet to see. I haven't seen a three-minute penalty this year. If there was going to be one, that may be it. I would say that's about the, the max enforcement you can enforce. Um, players looking away from it. You're yeah. beelining. I mean, there's, there's a target right there. Yeah. I mean, if this were basketball or something, that's a double tech. You're gone, in my mind. Yep. There you go. That's the first one I've you seen this it. year, Dane. I've yeah. been, uh, been to close to 40 boys' high school games this year. It's the first one. Three-minute non-releasable, and I don't I don't have a lot of <laughs> – not a lot of argument on yeah. that. The, the refs are going to use that one in their training sessions for the yep. next 10 years. That is textbook. Yep. And, uh, again, if you could go more, I'd even go more. I mean, that, that is, like, not Un a good play. Unfortunately, won't matter nope. uh, in, in this one, even if Harriman does score even three or four. Um, but still, yeah, not a great not a great look. Still not started the clock here in the stadium, so they did give a little extra time of that uh, three-minute penalty. Man we, up here. We usually see it going the other way. Right, right. <laughs> Where, you know, the home team runs it a little longer after the whistle. Man up here for Harriman. That Fremont defense continuing to make him work. This one scooped up. I thought it was by someone Niago. And the push here will give it to Fremont. Should make mention the uh, Harriman player. I don't remember the number, but no one's being looked at. So good to see there was no yep. injury on that. Right. Fremont now with it. Offensive zone here with Searle. Sent back with Isaacson, and I mean, this is all just draining the man down. That's right. They'll uh, they'll likely kill this penalty. Got a little huddle going on. Yeah, a little trickery. Over with Reese. Back with Carson. Minute gone in the three minute non releasable. Isaacson still with it here. 
And there's an extra defender here for Harriman and really kind of just letting mano y mano here at X. It, it's tricky too. You don't want to overextend. Right. Right. And and we saw it in the first half. Harriman, when they were man down, uh, or, or uh, sorry, when they had that extra guy over pressured and, and drew a penalty. Right. And so, so those are two things you don't want. And so just content to stay at home here and, uh, you know, pressure if it comes. Two minutes killed off here by Fremont. They do have the one shorthanded goal today. Penalty flag coming in. Tim, you talked about it. It's tricky. You also, you also saw a stall warning there by the officials. Haven't seen one of those much this year either. So define that for me, Tim. Uh, so, so since there's no shot clock in high school, it's up to the discretion of the officials to determine whether the offensive team is getting, is attacking or stalling. And so they have at their their discretion the ability to put to do a stall warning or, or a stall call. And so if Fremont in that case uh, stepped outside of the box, then it would be a, a turnover to Harriman. We, we I, like I said, I haven't seen it a ton no, this year. No, no. And, and so, yeah. It's a, which which it's, it's interesting because a discretionary thing, I can make the argument that the moment they get the ball, man down, they're in, I, I don't want to say stall, Sure. So they aren't really looking for a shot. And, and so what's what's the discretion? It's it's just I'm not a, trying to be critical. A, no, I'm trying right, to understand. Right. It's it's the it's the movement of the offense, right? So so what you saw from Fremont was they were just kind of dancing behind, right. right? Not really attacking, right? Um, and so the refs will take that into consideration, and then as time goes on, the less attacking that they do, the more likely okay. they are to get that stall okay. stall call. And again, that isn't something in college because they have the shot, shot clock. clock. And so uh, you know something in the high school game though. It was a uh, slash one minute, so we're even strength. And uh, the overlay is about 45 seconds. So Fremont will end up having about a minute of man up time. Or sorry, they'll have about 15 seconds of man up time. As we're inside the final minute here of the third, 15 for Fremont. Big shot off the <laughs> pipe there. And that ricocheted out 30 yards. That's going to the baseball field. That, that, had, that had some heat. Wow. That's, that's ricocheting into the wind going to the baseball right. field. Another one off the pipe. Same shot, same player, same direction. I love right it. Now, happy Gilmore somewhere. <laughs> I go regulation size or what? Final 30 of the third. Sign up for Isaacson. Oh, unselfish find. Over to Searle. It'd be interesting, Dane, to see how many times those two have combined for points throughout their career, you know, passing one to another and then the other scoring. Those two just work so well together, so much chemistry. Uh, you know, it'll, again, it'll be fun to see how they do the rest of this year and then also just the rest of their careers because excellent players. They've got great size. They've got great speed. They can shoot left hand and right hand, like just and solid players. Clearly have a knack, right? A comfortability yeah, right, with each other. Right. Uh, we, we talked about them coming in 58, 56 goals respectively for Searle and Isaacson. They each have six tonight. And uh, I'm not tracking assists for either, but coming into the game, Davis had 52 assists and Carson with 39 assists. So it's not just finding the back of the net. It's also finding the right player for the back of the net. And they've contributed on a lot of offense this year for Fremont. Yeah, just special, special players. And again, just sophomores. Quarter expiring, 16-4. Fremont between the second and third have taken control as they look to advance to the quarterfinals. You're watching second round action of Game Night Live Rewind's coverage of the 6A State Playoff. Start of the fourth quarter, Fremont, Harriman, 16-4. We talk about... Uh, you know, the year for Fremont up in Region 1 and obviously Harriman. I mean, you look at Region 3. We talk about Mountain Ridge Bingham, your co-region champs. Bingham going down today at the hands of Westlake in overtime. Harriman finished 7-5 and five in that region ahead of Riverton, who's in a battle right now with Weaver. That's a two-goal game in the third. Uh, Harriman 8-7 and seven on the year. and It's been a, a team that has just scored, you know, in the regular season, a couple more game uh, goals than they've given up. It's been about 50-50 you know, offense, defense for them this year. And today they just haven't quite had enough offense to keep at pace with the potent Fremont offense. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, like we've, we've mentioned a couple times, the depth just isn't quite there. 
Uh, it is a long drive from Harriman to, to Plain City, um, you know, and uh, so all, all the different factors weighing in here, uh, you know, but just the experience that this team will gain is, is very valuable uh, moving forward. You know, they'll all be able to, to look back on this and, and, you know, think about it, think about what they would have done differently and, and you know, it'll, it'll carry over into next year. Well, I mean, you talk about, you know, building programs and I know there's a great tradition there, but this roster only has five seniors on it. We talked about some of the youth today, some of the top goal scorers, the guys who had scored early were all sophomores and freshmen. It's a young group for Coach Lance. And, you know, it was that way with uh, Coach Gummersall at Harriman in basketball mm -hmm. this year. It's like, look, we're, we're playing a lot of sophomores and freshmen. We, we know we're going to take some, some lumps some nights, but in a year, two years, it's going to pay off. And it, it feels like Harriman's lacrosse kind of at that same point where it's like, hey, look, yeah, we, we may not win this second round game, but in a year or two, we're going to be tough. Absolutely. Another Fremont goal here. And that is uh, Reese and Satterwhite pairing up. You, you talk about it, though, Dane. You know, uh, this Harriman affected by the Mountain Ridge split, obviously. Uh, so a lot of these players for Harriman started last year as freshmen, as sophomores. And so that will continue to build, um, you know, as they get this experience. We've seen it in a couple teams. Uh, the one that comes to mind is Farmington. So when they split from Davis, sort of a similar story. Um, they were pretty much kind of went the other way. The new school kind of got the, the younger players. So yeah. that first year that they played, it was all sophomores and freshmen starting. Yep. Yep. You know, And then you see what they did last year, uh, going undefeated in the regular season last year. And, and it paid just huge dividends. And so I think we'll see, like you said, Harriman, you know, We'll be able to build on this. They'll remember this. They might have a bad taste in their mouth. Maybe that motivates them a little more coming into next season. Yeah, Tate McCoy, a, sen a senior. Ethan Namba, a senior. Uh, you look at Enoch Ulaberry, a senior. Uh, Quinton Brandt, a senior. So, you know, some careers coming to a close. And, and Ulaberry is, you know, one of the top goal scorers this year. Tate as well as Harriman there with a nice goal coming from a guy who was in the cage and Asher Deputy. I didn't notice that. That's awesome. I didn't either. <laughs> you brought a backup goalie. Might as well put him in. See if uh, your your current goalie can uh, make a spark on offense. Well, and Asher actually had three goals this year. So that's goal number four for Asher. <laughs> so he's, you know, showing his versatility. Man, what what a benefit to have a, a, a goalie slash attack man. <laughs> Just like, fantastic. I, I love that from Coach Lance. Just, you know, playing all the guys. That means everyone got in in this game. Uh, which which pays dividends on the morality side and and yeah just a great great uh, great play there. Will Doffermeyer, the uh, new keep here for Harriman, a sophomore, of course deputy a junior, so uh, also giving some of that youth some playoff experience and uh, yeah I love the decision. Those those players struggling to run on the field into that wind. Sent over. Good collapse there by that Harriman D. Reese, a big windup. That off target. And my goodness. That, that hit the, the upright. Yeah. The football upright. And then came out 50 yards from the upright. <laughs> We've seen a lot of firsts uh, in this game, Dane. Haven't seen that one maybe ever. I, I saw something unique at the MCLA National Tournament. I had the chance to call some games down there. Yeah. A player shot it. It hit the pipe. Yeah. He caught it and then shot it in. Never seen a self-assisted off the pipe goal. Does that go as a self-assisted goal? No, no. Oh, come on. I mean, for, yeah, it sure, Dane. Yeah, yeah it does. why not? It should. <laughs> if I was the stat keeper, I would have done it. I would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was wild, though. Never never seen anything like it. Pretty cool. That's got to be pretty good awareness as uh, this one's Rumsey. Why Rumsey with the goal here for Fremont? I, I still, you know, Searle and Isaacson, they've had their goals today. I... I would get some new guys in. Yeah, I would too. You know, and it's an opportunity to get those those younger players, you know, uh, that, that playoff experience, you know, check that box on their list. Because, look, next game they may not have that luxury. Right? Well, here's the other thing. Do, do you really want to risk injury? Yeah. It's not worth it. It's What's not it? worth it at yeah. all. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, we're, we're pretty much almost midway through the fourth quarter. I would pull, I would pull both of them. I mean, if, if you're going to play AF, if that's indeed who it is, we have no idea. Skyridge, you know, sure. 
upsets happen. Um, you you got to be healthy. And so for me, I would. Yeah, I mean, guys, look, we got this one. Save the legs. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple days. As this pass couldn't be corralled, it'll trickle out and be Fremont possession. That's where some people say analytics ruin sports, though. So, you know. <laughs> Talk to the Oakland A's about that. I... And Brad Pitt, who made a movie about it. <laughs> <laughs> this captured by Becker. Play the head with Searle. Davis still with it here. Over with Rumsey. We do have a Harriman Mustang on the sideline actually being looked at by staff. Right near the middle of the field as they send over. Wind up goal. Caden Berry with the heated strike. Does look to be just a cramping issue for the Harriman player. Might be Chandler Smith who's being worked on. But Berry scoring the goal here for Fremont. It is chilly. It is the one of the chillier days we've had. Drastic temperature change, the wind certainly doesn't help tight muscles. And we got official time out here. Not quite certain the reasoning. Equipment, the, maybe? Yeah, no, it's this injured player. You can't, you know, he's right in the middle of the box, substitution box. They're going to want to get him uncramped and uh, get him back on the sideline before they uh, resume play. Five and a half to go. We'll step aside and be back after this. Welcome back. It was indeed Chandler Smith. He was able to w work his way over to the bench. You could tell he was quite uncomfortable. Loose enough to walk, but uh, I don't know that we'll see him again. Probably not. He's He looks very comfortable on that bench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the big sophomores, a defensive midi for the Harriman squad. Talk about other Region 1 action. Davis feeling comfortable over Copper Hills in their second round matchup. And jarred loose. And I tell you, Deputy, he's probably been the best player today for Harriman. Yeah, yeah. Offensively and defensively, right? Uh, you know, just uh, you can tell uh, he's got the knack for lacrosse. And, uh, you know, uh, I, again, props to Coach Lance for putting him in uh, at attack, get a, get, get a run there. You know, and a lot are going to say he was a goalie and gave up how many goals. Like, But he also made how many saves right. to keep Harriman in this right. for, you know, 18, 20 minutes. Right. Fremont back on it. Well, no longer. That pass couldn't be kept. Oh, how about that crafty play? Just sweep it around, the pressure there. It's the advantage of playing on these turf fields, Dane. When I was uh, when I was that age and we did that, it would roll about two feet on the long grass <laughs> in the end zone. So, And then you're getting pulled. Yeah. Why would you do something like that? Yeah, that wasn't a thing. You just gave thing. it up. That wasn't a thing in, when I played, right? But nowadays it is something that some teams will practice, you know, sort of that – Hockey pass, that shovel pass type uh, play. Timeout taken here with 4.04 to go. Timeout, Fremont. We'll be back. 4.04 to go. Possession here with Fremont. Now we see some of that depth coming on for the Silver Wolves. Love it. This one being battled for. I almost thought that was a penalty flag rolling along the turf, but uh, that a little too light is this out. Seen a couple of uh, plates, a few napkins yeah. make their way across yeah. the turf tonight. Yeah. We've kept uh, anything from the press box clean. We've been yeah. able to secure everything. The, the thing I love about doing these games, Dan, with you is no, no press boxes alike. 
Yeah. Every single one we've been to is completely different yeah. from another. It's so crazy. You know, the, the stadiums are more or less the same, right? The stands themselves yeah. are, are very similar. Uh, but the press box, all of them unique. Yep. And some yep. I feel that I could have built uh, in a weekend. Of course, we go, myself. <laughs> we go Big Mac style at Fremont, the double decker. Oh, okay. Which uh, yes, you know, gives yes. you a little extra elevation, yep. which you I always love, love as a commentator. Yep. Of course, Coach Mullaney, Fremont, always so great. Appreciate them hosting us here. And we got uh, we got another. Well, we can't release it yet, but <laughs> Saturday we'll we'll have another classic press box yep. experience. That's right. So we'll hope for a little nicer weather on Saturday. As here comes Harriman pushing it up with Namba. Ethan, a ah, long pull. <laughs> yes, I love it. Namba, you mentioned he was a senior. Yeah, he will remember that goal for his entire life. Right. According Get to stats report, that's his first goal of the year. I don't know <laughs> if I believe that. But according to what's on Max Preps, yeah, first goal of the year. We got to take it at face value, yeah. right? We yeah. got to take it with the information that we have. Yep. Senior, last game of his career, playoff game. He will never, ever forget that goal. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. High school sports. Love, love it. it. And you know, there will come a time where maybe he's streaming sports and he'll talk to his ah. good buddy and be like, hey, I grew up in Plain City and uh, there was a play. <laughs> Harnessing my Dusty Litster <laughs> moments. You uh, you haven't brought up your turkey legs recently. I have not, although, <laughs> although it is a thing, Tim. So let me just go down this path. I was in Denver over the weekend. Oh. Doing semi-pro football. Okay. High school stadium. They had turkey legs. No and I was way. like, you guys are right on. No I way. almost took a picture just for you. <laughs> just for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you need a high quality turkey leg, you're going Idaho, Denver, Disneyland. <laughs> apparently, <love> <laughs> apparently, I love it. Yeah, I'll tell you, the booster club that first implements that in Utah is going to be very well known for a long time. So <laughs> I won't even charge you for the I, idea; it's free. I, I free. feel like these two schools will be perfect candidates. Perfect <laughs> candidates. I'm telling you, on, on fall fall evenings mm. in Utah. Yeah. You'd sell out in five minutes. Totally. <laughs> just, Couldn't agree more. Just saying. <laughs> Harriman again here, late push. I'm trying to get that over there to deputy. Wanted to earn him another stripe as this will roll through. Backed up by Harriman. Fifteen seconds to go, deputy. Tried to take the shot there and offsides here. Yeah, boy, too delayed. many, too many men. Yeah, yeah. Almost like they tried to slip a card there. <laughs> Clock like expires. It. Fremont with the decisive win, nineteen six over Harriman. Isaacson Searle combined for twelve of the nineteen. Well, it might have been more. I stopped counting at 12 of the 19 goals for Fremont. Tim, your final thoughts on a player of the game. Yeah, you know, we thought this game might go this way, Dane. Uh, just exciting, though, to come out and, and to see high school playoffs. I'm going to go with Searle as the player of the game. You know, he and Isaac, Isaacson had the same amount of goals, but Searle's goals came at a key moment in that first half, really put the dagger, uh, you know, in the in the heart of the Harriman fans. And, and uh, you know, just an excellent player. I'm, I'm excited to see them, you know, most likely – going against uh, American Fork. Obviously, that game going on right now. But, uh, you know, great effort by both teams. Great yeah. sportsmanship. Pretty clean claim. Pretty clean game outside of that one uh, penalty. But, uh, yeah, just a fun fun game and uh, looking forward to the rest. There will be future moments for Harriman. We talk about the mm. youth. They bring a lot of kids back. It's going to be an opportunity for this program to continue to build in the coming years. But you can say the same about Fremont. Their sophomore showed up today and Cyril and Isaacson and helped push them to the quarters. Uh, congratulations. Harriman on a fine year. Third uh, place out of Region 3 and, and Fremont moving on to the quarters. We'll find out the opponent later tonight. For Vince Francis, Tim Haslam, my name is Dane Stewart. Thank you for joining us. And uh, follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, on social media. Find out where we'll be for our quarterfinal game of the week on Saturday. And, of course, join us all next week for semifinals and championships right here on Game Night Live Rewind, only on kslsports.com.